Today I have uh, Ms. Deranisha Duncan Boyd uh, joining me. And would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone. My name is Deranisha Duncan Boyd. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, the National Executive Director with TransUnited, um, organization found in DC, but now based and operating here in Birmingham. Um, I've been in Birmingham all my life. That's amazing. Um, so how has your work positively impacted the community in Birmingham? Well, I must say that the work that I um, built here um, around um, Take Resource Center has positively impacted the community on many levels because, of course, um, before um, Take was created and the work um, was done and designed in the framework that I had for my community, um, basically no one else was doing the work here. So I seen the need because I'm a Black trans woman. And so I created something, um, a resource center where we'll actually be able to thrive as black trans women and also um, meet our basic daily needs. That's amazing. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Um, I know that the com community desperately needs it. And uh, thank you for um, agreeing to be a part of this interview series. I'm really excited to have you. Um, Thanks for having me. Of course. So. Um, what are some of the projects that you're working on right now in this crazy uh, time of virus pandemic? Oh my God, it is, it is, of course it is crazy uh, what we're dealing with um, when it comes to the global pandemic. Um, but uh, most definitely take having closed our doors to our clients, we have continued to meet um, each and every client's um, needs um, based upon what they are doing this time because we are a direct service organization. Um, when it comes to the national work that I'm doing with TransUnited, um, we physical sponsor um, several groups. So of course we've been um, continuing to build um, with their leaderships and bring their vision um, to life and just show up in a different way. Uh, we also was able to um, create a mutual aid fund where we was able to give out, I wanna say, a little bit over $15,000 to wow. um, different leaders. I want to say 150 people um, across the United States and just continue to try to show up for our community in a way and just um, strategizing on uh, what that looks like um, in this day and time. Um, dealing with take um, locally here, um, we're opening up a new um, resource center here and the resource center is almost three times as big as our last space that we was in. Um, so we have lots of space and lots of rooms for our clients to come in and enjoy. And most of all, appreciate it. We have a, um, a back oasis out there where we will um, be able to let the clients enjoy that. Um, and it's set up and it has patio furniture and have a grill back there and everything. So it's a nice um, space to do some self care. That is beautiful. I. Uh, I would love to visit when it's open if I can no, and possibly definitely. and possibly volunteer if you need any volunteers for anything. Yeah. Um, so this uh, this interview series is really personal, but uh, we're going to move into the more personal areas of the question segment. Um, so what does pride mean to you? And um, I know that that is a huge question. It's not like a one statement. <laughs> Thing. Well, um, it's mighty funny that you asked me what um, pride means to me. I have um, conflicting feelings when it comes to pride because, of course, um, we um, are the reason that pride even much exists. And when I say we, um, queer and trans people of color was the ones that created um, the movement by causing the Stonewall riot. But yes, if we moved but if we move to this day and present time, um, pride means very little to me. This is the fact that we are not often included and um, our local communities is not talking about the importance of having black and brown trans folks at the table and non-binary people. And so that's what makes me feel the way that I feel about pride, often being left out of many tables and not invited and not actually having the conversations why it's important to be there to embrace our population and most of all show up and support 
us in a way that we have showed up for the community in over 50 years ago, the reason why the LGBTQ plus community have liberation. I hear you on that. I, I completely agree. And um, on that note, what can the community do to better support uh, trans women of color, um, specifically in Birmingham, other than showing right. up? <laughs> well, I think what the community could do to basically support trans women of color other than just showing up, of course, invest in our leadership, invest in organizations that's doing the direct service work, and to understand that Take Resource Center uh, was founded by a Black trans woman, which is me, that's doing work taking care of Black and Brown trans folks throughout um, Alabama. And sometimes we reach outside of Alabama, depends on um, if folks are reaching out to us um, for support and services. But um, just understanding that no one understand our community or take care of our community the way we can. So most of the times we just need you to be quiet, listen to what we have to say and follow our leadership. I hear that. So on, on a, a little um, positive, I guess, tra trajectory off of that, um, what does community mean to you? What is your sense of community that you have here in Birmingham and um, how is, is it important to you? Well, I think the sense of community that we have here in Birmingham, I love um, my community of trans women of color, even though that I am in an executive leadership role, but I still look at myself as being relatable, somebody of community, someone that have been through the struggles, and I try to embrace each and every one of our clients and let them know that there are love, um, there is hope, keep scribing, because um, I can be able to relate to each and every one of them on different levels. So that's what makes me feel like that the work that I'm doing is not going in vain and this is community. I love that you've, um, you've made your life's passion, your, your life's work, you know, um, <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, that's, that's, it. it's, um, thank you again. I, Every time I do these interviews, I just I keep I keep thanking everybody. I'm just so I'm just so thankful to have you here and to um, because you're right, it's needed in the community and just you know there there's prejudices even in the queer community that um, need to be addressed. Yes. And um, your work is 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 combating that. So thank you. So are there any books or authors or films that you have that have made a significant impact in your life? Well, um, you know, of course, um, Janet Mock, you know, um, her redefining realness. Um, and just basically, I would have to say the, the TV show where you said film um, Pose, I got a chance to watch that. I was and, about to know, say. I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a really, I'm not a TV fan, but if it's something that's involving our community or something that I think that um, I should be engaged with, I'll watch it and I'll try to, you know, relate to it and just, you know, feel myself um just being involved as a community member you know so i think though i would have to say those two and of course you know i have always um been a fan of jenny mock or whatever so she's amazing when you said that i was like oh pose right <laughs> Here and, I, I, and, I th and i think i watched um the orange is the new black maybe maybe a couple times so i was able to see um laverne on there well, Vern's amazing as well. I love Pose. Here at work, we talk about Pose, like when it's on every episode, what happened. Yeah. Um, so what are the things that bring you joy and how do you pursue them even when life gets stressful? Mm. What are the things that bring me joy? I think that the most important thing that bring me joy on a day-to-day -day basis would be um, simply being able to meet the need of one trans woman of color, especially my black community, because it's so hard for us to thrive and get the things that we need. And we are often shunned and put down. So, um, 
when I'm able to just assist and to see a lady smile, you know, that brings me joy. You know, if, if I'm not able to assist, then that bothers my spirit because I feel like I let someone down. Well, and I want you to also know that there are people in the community who do love you. And even though I'm just now meeting you, you know, there are people in the community who do support you. And um, I try to remember that in my own times of like facing like racial discrimination in Alabama. I'm not from here. And then I try to remember like there are people who love me, you know, and that's all that matters. And as long as you. And, you know, but you do need that support. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that um, this interview will help further, like, a, another platform for you in the community. Right. So. Yeah, and I, th I think that just to add on top of that, I often tell myself a lot that I know people that love me. They show it on a daily. You know, I, I can't. Uh, please everybody and everybody is not going to be happy with me, especially by me being an unapologetic black trans woman. Um, I stand firmly on um, what I believe in and firmly on um, the words because um, what I have is my values and my ethics that I bring to the work. And if something is not right, I'm going to hold you accountable. And I think many people don't understand uh, they don't like to be held accountable. And when you hold them accountable, they beat around the bush to try to make it seem like um, that's not the way it was meant to be. But, you know, you shouldn't discount how a person that's greatly oppressed feel. And as a Black trans woman, I'm not only a two-time strike, I'm a three-time strike. You know, I'm from, I'm from Black, um, I'm biological born as male transition into female. So that gives me three strikes that we know that the, um, the black woman is, you know, the bottom of the totem pole. So, and then the black man and then my trans identity. So it's just all over the place where I'm really oppressed, but I just found ways to navigate that oppression and bring myself somewhere out of the hole and now I'm trying to bring my people up with me and let them know that we can do it. We just have to stand together. And I know that um, no, no race is perfect. And I know the only way that we can fix these issues, we got to start seeing and taking care of each other. But we do know that racism um, still exists in Birmingham, Alabama. You know, and we, we can't erase that, you know, and people don't want to talk about that conversation because it becomes hard. I agree. I mean, people want to keep things very simple and they don't want to think about the things that we need to be addressing. And I feel like that's not something that we're dealing with on just a local level. It's on a national level. It's on a global level. I feel like uh, trans women of color, for the most part, uh, are ignored and uh, I'm, I'm sorry for that um, because you should be able to have community through a community that says that they are for you, you know, especially the queer community and we're not standing, you know, people are not standing for the violence that uh, especially women, like trans women of color, uh, you know, they're being killed in this country and nobody's talking about that. Right. Um, to get a little bit more emotional, we're going down another level. <laughs> my, my final two questions, they, they have been tearjerkers for some, for some. but um, if you could give your younger self advice, what would it be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know. This is this is um, so interesting because um, we just had a retreat um, a few years. Uh, I mean, not a few years ago, a few weeks ago, um, the end of May. And this was one of the questions that um, I posed to the ladies um, that was on the retreat because um, I did this um, before at a retreat that I was on um, the same exact question. And I think that I will have to say to the younger me, Dear Anisha, that you're brilliant. Um, everything that you have went through in life have made you the better you. 
all the myths that you have surpassed, builds the powerful message that you're able to stand before people today and tell, and there's hope. You are hope. And I guess that would also tie into my, my last question is, in what ways would your younger self be proud of who you are today? And that's oh. because you've overcome. Yeah. Um, I think that my younger self will be um, very proud of who I am today due to the fact that I have overcame a lot of things, a lot of obstacles, a lot of stuff have been in my way that I have been able to, you know, knock over and jump the hurdles and be able to be the person that I am today. And just um, to know that I didn't give up. You know, I, I didn't give up when I did lose hope, when I did lose um, faith, and I didn't see a clear path in my way that I was able to um, challenge a system and break barriers and set standards in my own hometown instead of me being like any other person and move away and try to create change. I decided to stay here in my own home and, you know, bring about change and bring about difference. And I know that um, I have lots of people that's proud of me, but I know I have lots of people that can't stand I even much exist because I stand firmly on my um, words and what I believe in. And I will continue to do that until the day God calls me home and I take my final breath you know, that I know when I go before the king that it's no questions, that job has been well done and I have carried out all the missionary work that I need to do. Um, I want to thank you again for being part of this interview. You, you are a beautiful person and I'm so glad that we got to meet in this way. Um, is there anything, uh, any last uh, comments you want to make for anyone who is watching? Yeah, I think the last comments that I would like to um, add to this interview is just, if you don't know a trans person, you know, try to get out and know your neighbor, because I'm sure that you have a neighbor that's possibly trans. And if you're not standing up and showing up for Black folks in this day and time, especially Black trans women, then you're doing a disservice to yourself because we understand that everybody is unique and different in their own way, but we're the ones that the, the world doesn't seem to think that we should exist, doesn't seem to think that we should thrive, and doesn't seem to think that we should have the same things or more than a regular US citizen. So let's start investing in black and brown trans lives, and most of all, let's start speaking our names while we are living, because we don't need you rallying and talking about us when we're dead and gone, because we don't know that your love that you have for us is real. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> this was a pleasure. Thank you.